Have you ever like stopped to think about how much we actually depend on language, <laughs> you know, for everything? Like it's how we share ideas and build relationships uh, and even argue about like who gets the last slice of pizza. Yeah. But have you ever wondered how we got here? You know, how humans like actually develop this crazy ability to communicate in such complex ways? It's a good question. So today we are diving deep into the super fascinating world of language origins. And get this, we're not even talking about fossils or cave paintings today. Nope. We are looking at the story told by our genes. That's right. And like this whole genetics angle is really like shaking things up in the field of linguistics. You know, th these articles you shared focus on a new study that uses genetic analysis to try to figure out like when humans might have first developed the capacity for language. Okay, so walk me through this. Like how can scientists tell when humans started talking just by looking at our DNA? Right. It sounds like something like a sci-fi movie. It might sound a little far-fetched, but honestly, it's pretty ingenious. So researchers are looking at like patterns of genetic variation in modern human populations. And by tracing these variations back in time, they can kind of estimate when different groups diverge from a common ancestor. So it's like a family tree, but on a massive scale, tracing the branches of human evolution through our genes. Exactly. And here's the really interesting part. Um, this study suggests that the capacity for language likely emerged at least 135,000 years ago. Wow. Which means our ancestors were likely communicating in complex ways much earlier than we previously thought. 135,000 years. That is mind-boggling. It really puts things into perspective. But hold on. Just because our genes were like wired for language doesn't necessarily mean our ancestors were just like having full-blown conversations, right? That's a crucial point, and that's where things get even more interesting. You know, the researchers propose that language might have first developed as like an internal cognitive tool, a way for early humans to organize their thoughts and make sense of the world around them, even before they started using it to chat with each other. So it's like they were having internal monologues, complex thoughts, like swirling around in their minds. But how on earth could that be advantageous for survival? I mean, wouldn't a well-aimed spear or the ability to run really fast be more useful? in those days well imagine trying to like solve a complex problem like how to track an animal or build a shelter without the ability to think in words oh. language even if it's just internal gives you a framework for organizing information planning ahead and even controlling your emotions so it's like having a built-in mental organizer helping our ancestors to make sense of the chaos and strategize in ways that other animals couldn't right i can see how that would be a huge advantage but are there any like specific genes that these scientists are looking at to trace language development so one gene that researchers have been studying for years is FOXP2. It plays a critical role in speech and language development, and mutations in this gene can lead to severe language impairments. Oh, wow. Interestingly, studies have shown that the human version of FOXP2 differs from that of chimpanzees in just a few key places. So these tiny genetic tweaks could make all the difference in our ability to communicate in such complex ways. It's incredible to think about, but, you know, I can already hear some of our listeners saying, hang on a minute, isn't this all just speculation? How can we really know what was going on inside the heads of our ancestors 135,000 years ago? You're absolutely right. To raise that point, it's impossible to directly observe the thoughts of early humans. However, this internal language hypothesis, while controversial, does offer a compelling explanation for some puzzling aspects of human evolution. Okay, I'm intrigued. But before we go down that rabbit hole, we need to consider the other side of the story. There are scholars who believe that language emerged much more gradually, right? What's their evidence? Exactly. This alternative view kind of sees language developing alongside other cognitive and social skills like tool making and cooperation. Okay. As our ancestors faced, you know, new environmental challenges and became more adept at these skills, they needed, you know, more sophisticated ways to communicate and share ideas. So in this view, language is less of a sudden aha moment and more of a slow burn evolving gradually as a response to the growing complexity of human life. Precisely. And one of the key pieces of evidence for this perspective comes from like the archaeological record around 100,000 years ago. We see this sudden explosion of symbolic artifacts. Really? Engravings on ostrich shells, intricate cave paintings, the use of ochre to create pigments, uh, all signs of abstract thought and creative expression. Ah, so these symbolic artifacts could be seen as evidence of language being used in like a more social context, a way to share stories, beliefs, and maybe even instructions for tool making. 
Because think about it, every word we speak, every letter we write is a symbol representing something else. The ability to create and understand symbols is intimately linked to language. It's true, we take symbols for granted, but they are everywhere. Emojis, traffic signs, brand logos, they're all shorthand for complex ideas. Mm. But going back to that burst of symbolic activity around 100,000 years ago, was it just a coincidence? Or did something happen that kicked our language abilities into overdrive? Well, this is where Professor Miyagawa, whose work we've been discussing, offers a fascinating theory. He believes that language itself acted as like a catalyst, triggering this explosion of symbolic thinking and innovation. So instead of language evolving alongside other abilities, it actually sparked those advancements. That's a bold claim. How does he back that up? Think about it this way. Once humans had a shared system of communication, a way to clearly express ideas and build upon each other's knowledge, the possibilities would have been endless. They could collaborate on more complex projects, share stories and traditions, and pass down knowledge to future generations. It's like language suddenly gave them a superpower, allowing human culture to blossom in a way it never could before. Precisely, language in this view wasn't just another tool in the box. It was the key that unlocked the box's full potential. It allowed human culture to take off. That's a powerful image. But isn't there a bit of a chicken and egg problem here? How can we be sure that language caused the explosion of symbolic thinking rather than the other way around. Maybe the development of symbolic thought, the ability to think in abstract terms is what actually paved the way for language. That's a great question, and it's a point of debate among researchers. Professor Miyagawa argues that while other primates can use symbols in limited ways, they haven't developed complex grammatical structures like humans have. He suggests that it was the emergence of this complex grammar, the ability to combine words in infinitely expressive ways that truly set humans apart and spark that creative explosion. Okay, I'm starting to see how those two seemingly contradictory ideas, the internal language theory and the gradual evolution theory, might actually be two sides of the same coin. It's like maybe language started as this internal tool, this way of organizing thoughts, and then as our ancestors started using it to interact with each other, it sparked this whole new level of innovation and cultural development. Exactly. And it's important to remember that even with all our scientific advances, we may never definitively know when or how language began, but exploring these different perspectives, considering the evidence and weighing the arguments, helps us appreciate the complexity and power of this uniquely human ability. Absolutely. It makes you realize that language isn't just about the words we speak. It's about the very essence of who we are. So with that in mind, I have to ask for someone who isn't a linguist, what exactly is language? What sets it apart from the grunts and chirps of other animals? That's a fundamental question, and Professor Miyagawa makes a clear distinction between the sounds that other primates can produce and what we consider human language. He argues that it's not about the physical ability to make sounds, but about the cognitive capacity to combine those sounds into a system of infinite expressiveness. So it's not just about having a booger vocabulary or being able to make more nuanced sounds. It's about having a system of grammar of rules that govern how we arrange words and phrases to convey an endless variety of thoughts and ideas. Precisely, it's about having the mental framework to take a finite set of symbols, words, and create an infinite number of meaningful combinations. That's what allows us to tell stories, build complex arguments, create entire worlds within our minds. It's like language is this magical code that unlocks the potential of our brains. Uh, it allows us to think in abstract terms, plan for the future, and reflect on the past. It's what makes us human, which makes the question of language origins even more fascinating. It's not just about understanding when and how we started talking. It's about understanding what it means to be human. It's a journey of discovery that continues to this day. Every new piece of research, every fresh perspective adds another layer to the story. So even though we may never definitively know when or how language began, the very act of asking the question of exploring the possibilities brings us closer to understanding this remarkable gift we possess. But I have one more question that's been bugging me. You mentioned earlier the concept of universal grammar for those of us who aren't linguists. Yeah. Can you explain what that means? What are some examples of these underlying structures that connect all languages? That's a great question. And it really gets to like the heart of what makes human language so unique. You know, universal grammar is this idea that there are underlying structures, principles, and rules that are shared by all human languages, regardless of how different they might sound like on the surface. So even though languages like English and Mandarin seem worlds apart, they actually share some deep underlying similarities. It's like there's a blueprint for language hardwired into our brains. Exactly. Think of it like this. All houses, no matter what architectural style they are, have certain fundamental elements, right? Like walls, a roof, a foundation. Yeah. 
Similarly, all human languages, despite their surface differences, share certain core features, for example. All languages have ways to express like who did what to whom, even if they do so, using different word orders or grammatical structures. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. So if we could crack the code of this universal grammar, could we understand like the fundamental building blocks of all human language? That's the ultimate goal for many linguists. And it's a quest that has you know, profound implications if we can understand the universal principles that underlie all languages. It could revolutionize the way we teach and learn languages and even shed light on the nature of human thought itself. Wow. It's incredible to think about the vastness of human language, and yet there's this underlying unity connecting us all. It's like we're all speaking different dialects of the same universal language. But going back to what we discussed earlier about the origins of language, yeah. I'm still struck by how much we don't know. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle with some crucial pieces missing. That's the beauty and the frustration of studying language origins. Yeah. You know, there's still so many unanswered questions, so much room for exploration and debate. But the very act of asking these questions, of seeking answers in our genes and ancient artifacts, in the structure of language itself, brings us closer to understanding this remarkable ability that defines us as humans. And for our listeners who might be feeling overwhelmed by all this information, I think it's important to just step back and like marvel at the fact that we're even having this conversation. We're using language to explore the very origins of language. It really is quite remarkable when you think about it. And it highlights the interconnectedness of everything. Language, cognition, social behavior, cultural evolution. It's all intertwined. Well said. I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We've explored the genetic clues that point to a surprisingly early emergence of language. The possibility that language first developed as an internal cognitive tool, and the idea that language acted as a catalyst for the explosion of symbolic thought and culture. We've even touched on the concept of universal grammar, the underlying blueprint that connects all human languages. And what I hope our listeners take away from this deep dive is a sense of wonder and appreciation for the complexity and power of language. It's a gift that allows us to connect with each other, share ideas, and build entire civilizations. And even though the origins of language remain shrouded in mystery, the very act of exploring these mysteries enriches our understanding of what it means to be human. Absolutely. And to all our listeners out there, we want to hear from you. Do you think language was the spark that ignited human culture? Or did it simmer and evolve alongside other advancements? What evidence resonates most with you? Head over to our social media and share your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the origins of language, be sure to subscribe to The Deep Dive for more explorations into the most fascinating corners of knowledge. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing.